Today on the Joy of Editing, I want to take a close look at the TK Gen Fill Panel percentage buttons. How are they actually working? We're going to look at that today. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me today. And today, I just wanted to really go over these percentage buttons found on the TK Gen Fill Panel so you can really get a handle on how they're working. You know, I had to wrap my head around them myself, and now I think I have a pretty good, solid understanding of how they work, and I want to share that with you today. And I'll be using this really cute dog image to do that with. And this is just an Adobe free stock image. And by the way, if you don't yet own the TK Gen Fill Panel, it's free. So you can click on my affiliate link in the description right below this video. Click on that link. It'll take you over to Tony Kuiper's web store where you could pick up the TK Gen Fill Panel. And as I said... It is totally free. And I believe it's the perfect companion when you're using generative fill in Photoshop. They work hand in hand together. Let me start out by talking about these percentage numbers. Now, think of these percentage numbers as a ratio. In other words, if you would choose a number like 100%, it would be relying, GenFill would rely 100% on your prompt. Now, it does look at the image too, by the way, but it relies on the prompt by 100%. Now, if you chose a number like 20, that means 20% would be the prompt and 80% would be the image. So in other words, it would look at 80% of the image and 20% of the prompt. If you chose a number like 60, it would be 60% of the prompt and 40% of the image. That would be a three to two ratio, if that makes sense. And if you can understand that, that'll help you to know which direction you need to go. But I'll start working on this image and we'll talk about it as I go. And I think it'll all start to come clear to you. Now, let's say, for instance, I want to add some trees to the right side of this image. So I'll just use a marquee tool and I'll just draw a marquee just like this. And the marching ants show my selection. Now, right now, it's selected at 100%. I don't have to click on the 100 percentage button. You can if you want to, but you don't have to because 100% is selected automatically and I'll just type in like trees just a very simple prompt like this so that means that it's relying solely a hundred percent on this prompt now as I said Photoshop does look at the image as well but it doesn't necessarily blend that well at a hundred percent and I find hardly ever does it really that's where these percentages will really be your friend so let's go ahead and click generate and see what happens. I'll pause between each generation so you don't have to wait. By the way, GenFill always gives us three versions. Here's my first version, and then we could use these arrows to toggle. Right now, that's my first result, and it's okay. It's not great. Now here's my second result, and I don't like that. I don't think it really fits this scene that well. And again, remember the prompt is being favored by 100%. Now, Photoshop does still look at the image as well. And now let's take a look at the third result. Now, this result looks about the best. It's matching the color pretty well, and it, it looks okay, but it's not perfect. You can see there's a street light up there. But now let's try something else. Now, what I want to do is try a different percentage. So I need to select this area again. And by the way, do not come to select and click on reselect because if you do it'll put that same percentage back in so don't do that you could command or control click right here this size is a little bit different than the original marquee selection that i drew but you could command or control click this to get the selection or you could just get your marquee tool and redraw the selection but you know what this is very important you see this layer is turned on right i'm going to shut this off because i do not want to favor what I'm doing with that layer being turned on. I don't want Photoshop's generative fill to look at that. So what I'm going to do is draw in the marquee again. So just like this. And now this time I'm going to use 65%. So that means 65% will be relying on the prompt and 35% will be relying on the image. The ratio works out to be 1.86 to 1. And I have to type in my prompt here. I lost my prompt. Type in trees again, and I'll click generate, and we'll see what we get. And right away, we can see this is a much better result. Even we can see, because it was light over here, if I shut this layer off, there was some sun probably coming in on this side. So I'll turn this on and 
generative fill saw that. So there's my first result. Here's my second result. That's pretty nice too. And here's my third. So these look much better. And I think I like the first result the best. I think that looks good. Now we could generate again if we wanted to, or we could try a different value. Let's try a different value. This time I'm just going to command or control click right here just to load that as a selection. And there you can see it's a little different in size, but it's it's close and it's fine. It's not a problem. And my prompt is still here, trees. Now, don't forget, this is so important. And I know you're going to forget to do this. You got to shut this layer off because you don't want to base the generative fill off those trees that were there when this layer is turned on. So make sure you shut this off. Very, very important. Okay, and this time I want to use a value of 75%. So I'll click on 75 and there you can see I have 75% of a selection right here. So that means that I am favoring the image by 25% and the prompt by 75%. So what do you think? Now the trees were a little bit light. So if I take this to 75, you would think they would not be quite as light, wouldn't you? because now I'm going closer towards 100%. I'm at 75%. So let's click generate and see what happens. Now, here's my first result. See, it's a little bit darker because remember, it is favoring the image less than it was before at 65. Now at 75, it's, it's favoring the image a little bit less. So it is a little bit darker. And now let's see our second version. Here's our next version. And that looks good too. And here's our third version. Okay, so... I don't know. It's a toss up. Which do you like better? Let me go back to this. Uh, I like that. I kind of like this one. Okay. Between this one, let me shut this layer off and turn on the previous one, this one, or here was my original at hundred percent. So look, here's a hundred percent. Here is 65%, a little on the lighter side. And now here is 75%. Now I think I like this one, but I'll tell you what I tried hundred percent. It was way too strong. And then when I went to 65%, I liked it. But then I knew if I wanted it to go not quite as light, I would have to step up in percentage. And that's why I thought, I think I'll go to 75 because I think it'll get a little darker. You see my reasoning there? And I was right because here is 65% and here is 75%. So that's pretty cool. But now let's do the same thing on the other side. Let's add some trees over here. I still have my marquee tool. So this time I'm going to draw my marquee like right about like this. Do you want me to do 100%? Let me know out there if you do. I'm, I'm going to do 100% for you. Remember, if I don't select anything, I automatically get 100%. I still have my prompt here, trees. Let's click generate and see what we get. Okay, there's my first version. Pretty dark and I don't think it looks natural. So let's take a look at the second version. Here's the second version. That one's better, and here is the third. Now, I don't like that one at all. Now, let's do it again. So, I'm going to command or control click right here to load that as a selection. Remember, don't choose reselect up here. It'll run the exact same percentage you ran the previous time. But we need to shut this layer off, right? Because if I don't, it's going to be looking at this tree line right here. And I don't want that. So we're going to shut this off. And now let's go with that 75% again. So let's click on 75% because I had good results before. And there you can see the magenta overlay is set at the 75%. And now trees is still here. I'll click generate and we'll see what we get. All right, look at that. That looks really great. Here's the next version. Not bad. I don't like it as much as the first. And here is the third. Well, that's interesting. I don't know what this is right down through here. But let me go back to the first. And I like that. But if I wanted that to go a little bit lighter, let's try it. Let me shut this off. I'm going to go ahead and reselect right here again. Command or control click right here. And now let's go to let's go to 65%. And let's generate it again and see what we get. Okay, there you can see it's much lighter. And that's not bad. Let's see the next version. That's pretty good too. And here's the third version. And you know what? I think in this case, I like that third version. You know, I probably would never start at 100, to be honest with you, on an image like this, because I know this is a lot lighter back in here. So that's why I wanted to stay around like 65 and 75. And in this case, 65 worked good on this side. And on the right side, 75 was good. Now, what are these dogs looking at? It looks like they're looking up at a tree and maybe a tree branch has fallen. So let's place a fallen tree branch down here. 
Maybe they're waiting for another branch to fall. This time I'll use a brush, so I'll click on the brush right here, and it defaults at 100%. You could change it to any value that you want, but I think 100% will work good because it's kind of dark here, and I think it's going to do a pretty good job at 100%. Right now it says trees, so I need to change this to fallen tree branch. All right, and now I need to use my brush, and this is important with this brush. Now I'm gonna paint across here, do not lift the brush. I'm gonna go over their feet a little bit like this. Don't lift the brush because if you lift the brush and you overlap, your blend won't be good because you'll have different blending amounts. So do it all in one fell swoop without lifting your brush. And now let's go ahead and click generate and see what we get. And here's the first result. And what I meant by dark down here, meaning like, I don't have light areas that I have to blend into so much, so I don't think I'm going to have that much of a problem blending in down here. But look at that first one. That looks good. Let's go ahead and toggle through these. Here's the second branch. That's not bad either, and here is the third. Well, you know what? Here's the first. I kind of like, I think I like this one. This looks really cool. And again, it looks like they're thinking, hey, is that other branch going to fall? And this guy's looking over in a different direction and maybe at a different branch. So that's pretty cool, right? So I am satisfied at 100%. Now, don't forget, every one of these layers, and I've explained this in different videos, you can rasterize these. So if I like this branch, I can click rasterize and say, well, I'm happy with that. I'll save some file space. Now, on this layer here, you can see it's turned on, and that's the one I like. So I can click rasterize and save some file space. And then on this layer as well, I like this one. So I can go ahead and click rasterize. This layer I'm really not using, even though it's turned on, you can't see anything, right? I'm not using that or I'm not using this layer either. So like what we can do on these layers I'm not using, I can come on this one, click on it and click the trash can and it goes away. This layer, click the trash can, it goes away. And then come to this layer I'm not using, click the trash can, and then, and then on this layer as well, make it active, and click the trash can. And now I've saved myself a lot of space. And now if you have the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can click this button right here. You can see the before. But look how the image looks without these extra elements, and here it is after. So I think these elements really help. You can also hold your Option or Alt key down and click on the uh, eye right here in the first layer and see the before and after, but pretty cool. I'll do one more thing, and that is to add a flock of birds back here. Now, I will demonstrate it at 100% and lower values, and this will really help you to really understand, again, everything that I've shown you today. I think it'll all be cemented when I show you how these birds blend in, okay? So what I'm going to do is type in a new prompt, and that'll be flock of birds. I'm going to make the top layer active and then what I want to do is I'm going to grab my brush tool now remember it defaults at 100% make my brush a little smaller and I'm just going to throw a flock of birds right back in this area right there and we'll click generate and see what happens and what do you think pretty bad right because they're really dark and they're going in a circle let's see my next version that's even worse, and here's my third version, so pretty bad. I'm going to go ahead and click the trash can because that was horrible. So now we're going to grab the brush again. This time, I'm going to go down. This is really light back here, so this is a key to help you out. This is light, so you probably want to use a lower value. I'm going to start out with 50, so it's going to look at 50% of the prompt, 50% of the image, okay? And now we're going to draw back here, okay? And flock of birds is still there. We'll click generate and see what we get. Okay, that looks much better. That's the first version. Here is the second version. Not quite as good. Here's the third. Okay, now notice something. The original at 100% looks like the birds are really close to us. These birds look further back. So what do you think if I would use a lower value like 35%? So let's shut this off and see what happens. See if I can place those birds further back. So this time, I'm going to click on the brush again and click on 35 and let's do it again. Flock of birds and generate and see what happens. Okay, see how they look much further back and that looks really good. There's my first version. Here's my second. That looks pretty cool too. And here's my third. I think I'm going to go with the first. Now, here's a little tip for you. See this button right here? This is for moving something you've generated. So we'll click this. 
then I could click on one of these birds and look, I can move it over here. Maybe I want my birds over in here. So that's a pretty neat little trick. And that works in any generative fill layer. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you better understand how those percentage buttons work with the TK Gen Fill panel. And don't forget to pick up your free TK Gen Fill panel if you don't have it yet. Click on my affiliate link in the description below. It'll take you over to Tony Kuiper's web store. And there you can pick up your free Gen Fill panel. Hey, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon and then click all so that you'll receive all notifications. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Cully. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy Editing.